Hello everybody, this is my beloved IBM 5150, more commonly known as the PC. And as you can see here, it is stacked full of not one, but two massive 360K floppy drives. And that was technically the biggest drives that these things fully supported. Now they did somewhat support the 720K double density three and a half inch drives, but that was with some limitation. So what if you wanted to put in a 1.2 meg floppy or a 1.4 meg floppy or even a GoTech? Well, you are out of luck because not only does the floppy drive controller not support it, but the BIOS doesn't. Or I guess I should say you would be out of luck without the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, because not only can you not buy this on Tindy, and not only can you not buy it on eBay, you can't buy it anywhere. You have to make it yourself. And so you can simply upload these files to PCBWay, and in about a week, you will have a set of shiny PCBs at your door that you can build up however you want to solve a bunch of these problems and more. Now I will have some video of the actual assembly of this PCB in the corner, but I want to share with you a few different things. One of the things I love about this project by a man named Sergey is that it is a very flexible project. You see, you can build up just a single floppy controller, which will allow you to do four floppies, or a dual floppy controller that will allow you to do eight floppies, and even a serial port, which I'm not using on this one. So I love that. I love the fact that you can do as much or as little as you want. Now this one is actually overkill for this project because we're only going to be using this first connector. But the magic of this doesn't really have anything to do with the floppy controller itself. It's the fact that this thing loves some BYOB. What is BYOB? It is bring your own BIOS. Because not only did Sergey make an awesome floppy controller, he made a special version of a BIOS that can actually run on your computer and will handle all this. And that's the magic that makes it work because the BIOS in this machine and a lot of the old machines didn't support, they didn't even know that 1.2 and 1.4 meg drives existed. And so what this thing does is this handles all of it. You tell your computer, hey, I don't have a floppy controller. I don't have any floppy drives installed and let this thing work its magic. Now I will say that I did run into one problem or maybe a hundred um, building this thing but I've worked all that stuff out for you and I'm going to show you exactly what to do. You're going to want a very specific version of this BIOS and you're going to want to follow some instructions. So let's get started. All right so here we are inside my original IBM 5150 and I'm just going to remove the original floppy cable and then uh, the original floppy controller. Now, the funny thing is, if you're seeing this video, I'm assuming that this is gonna work um, because my hard drive is full of hundreds of gigabytes of things that I thought were gonna work and didn't. Um, so if this video makes it to the YouTube, I'm going to just assume that it either works or goes catastrophically wrong. Now, one pro tip, I looked up on eBay. Uh, these cards are going for about $30 to $40 used, obviously, on eBay. And so uh, you won't be needing this card anymore if this works. So you may decide to sell it and to actually offset the cost of making this card. Now, for the sake of this project, I'm only going to use a small portion of the features on this card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this first jumper over here, saying that I only want to use um, FDC, floppy drive controller number one. I don't care anything about the IRQ on the second one because we're not using it. I don't care anything about the DMA on the second one because we're not using it. I'm going to um, put this first uh, jumper over here to say that we're enabling this chip and then I'm going to put this one on the third to uh, set our address for the BIOS and then I'm going to stick one on this last one to enable us to write. And that's all I'm going to do. No cables, no nothing. I'm just going to plug it in. The fan on this machine is crazy loud so I'm just going to narrate what's happening here. We boot up the machine and then we're going to press F2 to enter the configuration. You can press H to see all of the options that are on the BIOS. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to hit P to print out what we have currently set up. There's something called the initial program loader, and we want to put it into a compatibility mode for these older systems. So we're going to go ahead and hit I, and uh, we're going to choose the built-in option. After that, we're going to tell it to disable the secondary floppy controller since we're not using it. 
and then we're going to delete any drives that we already have in there just so I can show you the entire setup process. So you'll see that we're going to delete drive one and then we're going to delete drive zero and we're good to go. You'll want to check out the documentation for adding drives, but essentially you're going to hit A and you're going to tell it where it's at on the bus and you're going to choose your drive type. And so I've done that here for both the 1.44 and the 1.2 drives. And then once we're done that, we're going to go ahead and hit the W key to write these settings and then we can reboot the computer. All right, now that I have the BIOS properly configured on the card, uh, just so you know, this is the primary controller first two floppy drives, primary controller second two, secondary controller first two, secondary controller second two. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug our floppy cable in for our 1.4 and 1.2 meg drives in with the red stripe facing to the left, like so. And then we're gonna put the card in and make sure the drives have power. All right, my setup here is a little awkward, but um. I've got a DOS 6.2 disc on a 1.44. We're gonna pop that in. I'm gonna flip on the thing. And uh, this fan's a little loud, I'm gonna switch it out. But, uh, so I may cut away sound if it seems annoying. So as you can see here that we are going through the process of booting a 1.4 meg drive on a computer that doesn't support it. We'll do a DIR so that you can see that it does have 1.2 megs free. So that's working really well. So we are going to go ahead and pop in a 1.2 meg disc into a 1.2 meg drive and format that here just so you can see that it does work. So yeah, as you can see, one of the things this card does is allows you to put floppy drives on computers that didn't actually support them and so uh, that's pretty sweet i want to thank pcb way for sponsoring this video and bringing this kind of stuff to the community i want to thank sergey for designing this board and uh, i want to thank you for watching so hey have a great day